there is this misconception that Tyler is doing exceptionally better than Ira Star, and a lot of people are attributing it to colorism. They're saying uh, Ira Star is not getting the Tyler treatment because of the color of the skin, and colorism does exist. I would never downplay that, but I think it's there's much more to the story than colorism. In fact, I want us to question if. Tyler is doing better than Iris Star in the first place. Also, there is another girl in South Africa called Elaine. And people are saying that they expected the Tyler success from Elaine as well. But it didn't happen. Why? Is it because she's also darker than Tyler? We are going to get into all of that. But first, welcome to my channel. My name is Dina Watuli. And thank you so much for coming. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you comment at the end of the video. I'm going to try to do something new. Every time at, when the video ends, at the end, I'm going to leave you guys with a question and we can, you know, engage on that in the comments. Colorism is basically discrimination against people of darker skin tones. I was watching this documentary where this woman was talking about colorism and how it dates back to slavery. She's an American, so I felt it was very important to say that. She was talking about how even though uh, all black people were slaves, the lighter skinned people would be better slaves than black people darker skinned people same black people but because you are darker then you get the harder work you get to work outside in the fields in the sun but at least if you were light skinned you could work inside the house and do like lighter work still slaves but you know there was different levels to it so i don't know how that true how true that is when it comes to south africa because she is in American, she was talking about american history but i see how that can also be something that was experienced here knowing that we also had that time we also had apartheid in south africa and i didn't look this up exactly but i if i'm wrong please do correct me i do understand that maybe psychologically when a white person would look at black people it's like the lighter skinned ones are closer to whiteness than us who are very very black so just like in america where during the slavery times they would look at lighter skinned as better than the dark skinned people i would assume that the same was happening here so now that we got the history of it out the way cool unfortunately it's still happening now there are no slaves and masters we're just doing it amongst ourselves you see it on a daily basis there would be jokes like uh Moana versus a baby or Mdoana versus a baby and obviously the Moana the Mdoana would be darker in complexion and deemed ugly but the baby would be a light-skinned baby who's like close to whiteness light as light in complexion which for a lot of people is just the standard of beauty and now to go back to today's topic, I'm going to first do Tyler versus Ira Star and then Tyler versus Elaine. Yes. So when I'm saying versus, I don't want this to go unsaid. I am not saying versus in like a negative way. We're just doing it for the sake of the video to put their careers side by side. Since people are already doing that, we're going to just explore the idea. So we're going to start with Tyler versus Ira Star. Tyler is a South African artist. She is doing, uh, uh, right now, the genre for music is like I'm a piano slash pop slash R&B. I'm a piano is South African, is a South African based genre. It's a, it's a South African, it's, it originates in South Africa, let me say that. And then Ira Star, similar to Tyler, she's doing Afrobeats, with, which is a Nigerian sound genre of music slash pop slash r&b they're kind of similar in that sense also another thing that is very similar is their style how they wear their music sounds also is like it's the same genre it sounds the same not the same in a bad way but it's like a similar genre it's the modern r&b pop mixed with their respective sound from their countries from their respective countries i hope that makes sense Another thing that is similar is the way that they dress. They both dress in a way that they expose a lot of skin. They show a lot of skin. They are also very slim. So when you look at them, the only difference that you would see is the color of their skin. Tyler is light skinned. Iris Star is dark skinned, which has caused a whole lot of people to say, oh, Tyler is getting all of these things. She's getting a Grammy because she's light skinned. And if Iris Star was also light skinned, she would be getting the same attention. Firstly, Tyler is not doing better than Iris Star. 
and yes if you've watched my first video that i did on tyler something has changed i was like no tyler's not an industry plant she's been working hard people must leave her alone however after she failed to sell sell tickets for her the tour that she was supposed to go on before releasing her album she she couldn't sell well they her team came out and said she had an injury and that is why the toy is cancelled now if i'm being honest with myself i know that the only injury that happened is the sales injury there's been a dilemma when it comes to tours there are just celebrities who cannot get their tickets to sell and it led me to a deeper question i was like if she can't sell the tickets then how come all these people who are watching and streaming these songs how are they not buying the tickets i mean that should if so many people are listening to her music and all the videos that she drops on YouTube are doing so good, then why is that not resulting in the ticket sales going up? Because then, you know, it makes sense that way. And I started thinking about Bomek G when they were saying that there's a lot of stream farming happening there. And I'm like, knowing who her record label is and how big they are, that wouldn't be far-fetched. And then now I started exploring her being an industry plant. Uh, but let's leave that alone. I've already mentioned the record label. The record label that Tyler signed to is Epic Records. Epic Records is under Sony. And you know how big Sony Music is. They are a giant corporation. They have worked with some of the biggest stars in like forever. They are also, it's very important to note that Sony Music is over 90 years old. Ira Star is signed to Marvin Records, which is just, it's not an international record label like Sony Music, Epic Records. It is a Nigerian record label. It also has big stars like Rema and Tiwa Savage. But if we're being honest, it's not even nearly as big as Epic Records. So from that, I can even also understand the push, uh, the reach that Tyler's label has. Tyler's label has so much influence and we know that the executives of Sony or maybe Epic Records, it's some of those people who have long-standing relationships with radio stations, with all of these big platforms and that's how we have seen Tyler being interviewed everywhere, literally everywhere, even up to getting a Grammy. Ira Starr's record label is only like 12, 15 years, so I would understand maybe how maybe they don't have the same reach but let me tell you something if there's anyone doing better than the other between ira star and tyler i would say ira star is doing better than tyler why am i saying that ira star is not being pushed significantly in a weird way she's joke she's growing in a very authentic way in a genuine growth that's what we see from ira star that's why i want us to correct that first yes i have changed when it comes to tyler when you look at her achievements it's like yes she's good she can sing she can dance which maybe is like another thing also her racial ambiguity to the americans everyone there was a conversation around her where, is she black is she not black that also created a com uh, conversation around tyler it made her even more famous if if i can say so because even if maybe let's say you missed her song on tiktok the argument and discourse around her race then made more people even aware of her it's like when they do brand awareness that's what is was excuse me that's what was happening with tyler a lot of people were just talking about her not only about her music but where she comes from her accent all those things like contributed to how big tyler became the conversations around tyler let's pause there I'm, I'm losing it i'm losing i was talking about iris star and her record label and why iris star is actually doing better than tyler yes iris star has successfully been on tour people have bought her tickets where is that coming from it comes from when bomeji was saying that no tyler is tyler's record it, record label is into stream farming it then makes sense if the those streams that she gets cannot now get her the tickets why because maybe she's not as big as her record label is making her seem like i know i'm, I'm kind of like i hope you guys understand because now i'm going really crazy my mind is putting all of these things together at the same time but 
Iris Star is getting genuine growth. She's she has genuine fans. She had and also people love a good story of how you slowly came about. But people can be very much against someone that just comes out of nowhere and gets everything. Tyler's team up when they got her the Grammy. Because I know they did. She was up against Burner Boy. She was up against also Iris Star was also in the same nominations, but how did Tyler end up getting a Grammy over Ben a boy? That's one of the things that they got wrong. You do not want to take your artists and put them on, you know, exponential growth to a point where people are like, there's no way. It's like, this is unbelievable. They, I feel like they should have done half of the things that they did just so that people can have more respect for her. Ira Star will have, you know, more long-term fans because of her story. It's coming up genuine Everyone will respect her for that. But what about all the other people in the in the industry who are just as good as Tyler, but did not get the same push that she did, which is not on organic, if we're being completely honest. I was very naive in the beginning to say that, you know what, no, she deserves all these things. Yes, she deserves everything that is good. But if we're being honest, some of these things just came way too prematurely, especially the Grammy. Even people like Nicki Minaj, who's the biggest star of all time, has not got a Grammy yet. It took Rihanna three years to be nominated for a Grammy, but Tyler got, or not nominated, but she won her first Grammy three years after her first song. You get what I'm saying? Even the biggest stars did not get it that easy. Her getting it that way also makes people just look at her with a lack of respect. Yes, she's good, but no, if you're being honest, this is not genuine growth. Something is being done. She's being pushed. She's sometimes even being put on platforms that she does not deserve, at least not yet. I do wish that her team held back with the Grammy because a Grammy was like, it just gave it away. Uh, it was the Grammy. And then another thing that gave it away for me is the tickets. If you are as good as your label is saying you are, why are you not selling? You know why that is? They can manipulate literally everything else with their power and reach and money, but they can't really buy tickets for her because then people would know that you, they bought the tickets themselves. Now we're going to move on to Tyler versus Elaine. Now, when it comes to Elaine versus Tyler, it's very simple. Tyler is signed to Epic Records and Elaine is signed to, currently signed to Columbia Records. Both of these record labels are under Sony Music. So basically you can say that they're signed by the same person. So it's very fair for people to ask, like, why is it not the same thing? I am going to give you differences between Tyler and Elaine. Elaine is also South African. She blew up in 2019 when she released an EP and everyone was so in love with it. Another reason why we were so in love with this EP is that it was done, the story behind it. Everyone loves a good story, a humble story, a story like from humble beginnings. We love that because we can relate to that. It makes us feel like even my situation can change any time. Elaine did this, this EP with her producers in a back room somewhere in Soweto. I don't know how true that is. Please, if I'm wrong, correct me respectfully. Né? But that story was just a great story. She did a very good EP. Her songs were amazing. I loved that EP as well. But after that, COVID hit and she kind of disappeared for a while. We did not hear anything. And then in 2020, I think, 2020, she got signed to columbia records and when she did get signed she went quiet for a very long time now when we compare that to how tyler came about tyler was signed when she did a music video of uh, her first music video getting late before epic records and that's how they noticed her they got her when she was hot and they kept you know they took advantage of the spotlight they melt the moment like ever since tyler came up with water she has never stopped you get what i'm saying it was go 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 but with elaine she went quiet for some time and that can affect your career if you are new you want to make sure that you make the most out of the spotlight if you get the chance you just make the most out of it you don't stop that is the first difference elaine was signed at a time where the buzz was actually quieting down when it comes to her ep as well, COVID came and 
it, she became radio silent. The second thing is that, you know, the difference between Tyler and Elaine is that Tyler has a connection with her fans. Before she became, she, she came to Stardom, she was doing uh, TikToks and she was also on YouTube doing vlogs and all of that. She was growing her fan base. So way before I knew that Tyler was singing, I had seen her from TikTok doing dances. I think I even followed her or my sister did. We were under lockdown. We were watching all of these people coming up, watching uh, their TikToks. And there were now people who were starting to be very popular. Tyler was amongst those people so she had a big fan base even now even though yes she doesn't have a fan base big enough <laughs> to buy her tickets but she has a very you know big following on social media and that is also attributed to her personality she's very out there elaine is not is not the same i've seen her on tiktok you know being active after being signed to columbia records but it's still not you know at the same level as Tyler is doing it where she's so active on these social media platforms. Tyler has a name for her fans. She calls her followers tigers. Ellen does not have any of that. And it might seem like a very small thing, but I promise you it is all part of a big... These small parts, they make uh, the bigger picture. They're very important. When you're following someone and you have a name, look at the Nicki Minaj's people the bobs there's nothing they wouldn't do for her she makes them feel like they belong so even Ty tyler's people when she calls them tigers now they're going to go around and make uh, social media pages around that once she gives it a name people are going to go out and do fan pages elaine does not have that she does not even have a name for her fans they her fans don't feel they don't feel like they belong to a community. You get what I'm saying? And that is all part of the bigger picture. Another difference is that Tyler, uh, she can dance. She's like a full package. Also the type of music that, that she's doing. When you compare it to Elaine, Elaine's music is like R&B. Pop is pop and my piano that Tyler is doing and R&B infused together, they can reach a bigger market than just R&B. Uh, her moving to America, Elaine, when she was doing R&B here in South Africa and it sounded the way it did, she blew up because everyone in South Africa was like, wow, this sounds like American quality R&B because, you know, R&B is usually, R&B in that caliber that she was doing is usually comes from usually comes from America, so everyone was blown away with that. But now when she goes to America, remember in America, they have a lot of artists like that already. They have their, her, they have their Bosama Walker, so it's going to be hard for her to break into that market since America already has that there. Same thing with Nasty C. He was good here. He had a better chance here in South Africa because what he was doing was new here. Not new in the sense that there was no hip-hop, but the way he sounded. He sounded like he was from there. Everyone was impressed. So when you go there with something that they already have, it's going to be kind of hard. Both Nasty C and Elaine, I feel like they had a better chance of making it and becoming as big as Boy AKA if they stayed here. Because they're in America, what they're offering, it's already there. When you compare that with Tyler, what she was doing with um, a piano slash pop slash R&B, it's kind of new. You know, no one is doing all of these things. And com combining that with dancing and the accent, everyone was fascinated in America about... Tyler's accent. Everyone was fascinated. There started being a conversation around, you know, all of these small things. They contribute and make the whole brand that Tyler is. And with the industry plant thing, it kind of does not stand when it comes to Tyler versus Elaine as they are both signed to basically the same label. If they wanted to do uh, LA, for Elaine as they did for Tyler, they easily could do that. But them signing Elaine when she was quiet, it kind of made them shelve her a bit and take advantage of the moment that Tyler was already coming with. They signed Tyler at a time where she was um, blowing up, so they took advantage of that moment. They signed Elaine when she was very quiet, and labels tend to do that. If no one is talking about you, they put you on the side. They shelve you and look at other artists. That is the main difference. After a very long hiatus with Elaine, when Columbia Records started putting out music, they put out music that people did not relate with. We didn't love it. We, we did not feel like it was the same sound that she came up with, if you get what I'm saying. Her first EP, she was working with Clarity. I'm guessing, I'm guessing he's like a producer. 
they dropped him why would they do that this is the person that uh brought you up you're working with them when your first project blew up why would you get rid of that person look at ice spice and um that guy Kunji, who's what's his name uh riot ice spice and riot they saw that their combination worked from then they're still working together even today because when we fell in love with when the people who listened to ice spice fell in love with her that's what they loved that sound so why would you drop that sound so quickly when people are just catching up to you same thing should have happened with elaine they should have never gotten rid of the people that made her first ep i think they must just go back there and then besides the r b that people did not love they then started being very experimental which was too early she is coming up no one knows her yet just stick to the sound that people love her for stick to one thing this is when we came to you we loved your r&b and now all of a sudden you're doing these things that are just off brand for you they made her do a song with gabza they made her do a song with blakey all of these things were too experimental we did not understand them it did not make sense to elaine's followers it did not make sense to elaine's brand when i followed elaine is because of that ep that she did and it was so good and now all of a sudden i'm hearing all these experimental sounds and i got very confused and lost uh they can still very much salvage her situation if they can just maybe she must just get out of that if she can get out of that record label come back and go back to working with her initial producers so in conclusion Yes, colorism exists, and maybe it might have played a little part nyana to why Tyler is as successful as she is, but I don't think it's the sole reason. Hence, I mentioned all these other aspects that have, you know, probably contributed to her being as big as she is today. With all of that being said, today's question is Do you think Tyler will be fine? What do you think? her future looks like and also what do you think elaine should do to get back into the game 